Hi everybody, welcome to our monthly wine tasting here at Messina Hop. It is so great to be with you. You know, it's been an exciting uh, month since I was with you last. Uh, first, we had a fabulous trip to Portugal. It was the first time ever that a, first of all, a U.S. wine was tasted in the port houses of Portugal, and then the first ever Texas port uh, to be tasted at Sandeman and uh, at some of the great port houses in Portugal. Uh, it was a great experience. Merle and I uh, uh, represented the great state of Texas at an international wine tourism conference. We were speakers. We got to see Portugal, which is, I would recommend it to anyone. Uh, fabulous country, uh, great people, wonderful uh, wines. Uh, we were in the Vino Verde region of Portugal, which is north of Porto, uh, where they make some great white wines, nice, clean, crisp wines, uh, and also at a great price. And then we toured the Douro Valley, where those fabulous terrace vineyards are located, uh, and it's an amazing place to visit. And then to journey down the Douro River to the port houses in Porto, where the wines are stored and uh, aged for years. Uh, the oldest uh, port we had was more than 40 years old, and I can tell you it's a delight uh, to uh, visit those places. And then just the city of Porto is such a historical uh, place. It's a, uh, a European city that is cherished because uh, the uh, buildings are in many cases four and five hundred years of age. So it was a great trip. It's great to be back. Uh, I'm celebrating uh, knee surgery. I had knee surgery uh, two days ago. So I'm really looking forward to uh, having these wines. Uh, you know, because wine has a wonderful way of reducing pain as well. Uh, also, later in the day, we're going to be down at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo Best Bites. And I'll, I'll get to see all my good buddies. Hopefully, I'll see my good buddy, Bud Royer. And he and I are going to be able to walk about the same speed. Uh, and so we're looking forward to seeing all of our friends down at, uh, at the rodeo, uh, which is really a landmark and, uh, and an amazing an event uh, unto itself. So uh, the first wines we're going to have is the uh, Sophia Marie Rosé, which we introduced uh, at uh, wine premiere this year. I'm going to be showing you with the waiter's uh, corkscrew. Uh, it's one that is really easy to use, uh, but most people kind of mess it up because they, they get into a position in which the screw itself is not vertical. The thing that makes this fabulous is that it's got two notches on the, uh, on the waiter's corkscrew uh, and a Teflon coated uh, uh, auger. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, and you know, thanks to my lovely wife, we lost another one of these at the Portuguese airport. And currently, Merrill is listed as a potential subversive uh, uh, person because she had one of these. The little blade on the opener exceeds the uh, requirement of the uh, security forces, so she naturally tried to bring it in our bag and they have her name down and I'm sure she'll be investigated by the FBI. Uh, but in any case, um, in our, our case, we don't need the, the blade since we don't have a foil on the bottle. You basically just take the, uh, the screw and you put it right into the wax. Don't take the wax off, just screw right into the wax. Screw it all the way down until you can't see the screw anymore. And then it has a small notch. You just go straight up. Now you change it to the other notch, and it goes straight up again. If you start with the uh, lower notch, you'll bend the cork. And by bending the cork, you're going to crack it. You know, cork is the bark of a tree. One of the fabulous things that we saw on our Portuguese uh, trip is that Portugal is the number one producer of cork. So we actually saw the raw cork, cork being uh, harvested from the tree. It looks like a, a normal oak tree. 
except that the bark is about two and a half inches thick. Uh, you have to wait until the tree is about 20 years of age. You can harvest the bark every eight years, uh, and, and then it forms another bark again, and then you can harvest it again. But basically what they do is they strip the cork from the first major branches all the way down to the ground. So basically the cork is, is peeled off the tree and it comes off round. And then they take that bark and they put it into steam and hot water and it flattens the cork. And then they go and uh, do the rest of the processing. Uh, a really fascinating thing. Uh, you know, you're driving down the road and you look to your right hand side and there's no bark on the tree because that tree was harvested. And you see that it turns a almost a, a crimson, crimson red initially, uh, which shows that the tree is healthy and it's basically uh, repairing itself to lay additional bark onto the, uh, onto the tree again. And then you can see the trees go through stages where it goes from uh, a, that crimson red to a light brown, which is the early stages of the bark coming back, to a dark uh, brown, which is when the cork is fully formed on the, on the trunk again. Uh, and that means that the tree is just about ready to be harvested again. So uh, amazing uh, process. Uh, and natural cork is a, uh, a time-honored tradition in the wine business. Cork's been used now in the wine business at least 400 years. And uh, people say to me, do I think that it's going to fade and we're going to go to screw cap? And I say, absolutely not. Every study thus far indicates that this cork is the best way to close a bottle of wine. Uh, when I see the cork in a bottle, there is only a 10 milliliter void between the bottom of the cork and the liquid. That means that there's potentially 10 milliliters of air. But when we uh, bottle, we suck that air out. Now, over time, air does go back through the cork into the bottle, but you're only dealing with 10 milliliters. When you put a screw cap on top, you've got 70 milliliters of potential air, and yes, the air does get past that screw cap, so potentially that wine's going to oxidize faster than a wine with a cork. So when will Messina Hoff move away from cork? Hopefully not in my lifetime. Uh, so let's get back to Sophia Marie. Sophia Marie is naturally our granddaughter. She is now nine months old. She stands up. Uh, she is a uh, trooper. You can tell that she's really a Bonarigo because uh, her first words out of her mouth were not mama and dada. It was hello. Uh, I've never heard a kid say hello first. And her first uh, physical gesture was waving. So I think, uh, I think we've got potentially a public relations person there. There's no doubt about it. I mean, her first word is hello. Uh, you know, so as soon as she's old enough, we'll have her as our greeter at the door. I mean, she seems to be made for it. Uh, Sophia Marie is a, uh, uh, I'm spilling it on the table, exciting. Um, Sophia Marie is a rosé made from the Lenoir uh, grape. It is a beautiful color. It's, it, it looks just like the rosés from Provence. Uh, it has a, a unique aroma. It smells like strawberries. The other day we were doing a tasting and the uh, grocery store was uh, featuring strawberries. And we tasted the, uh, the, the rosé with strawberries and it made a fabulous, fabulous uh, tasting. First of all, they're the same color. Secondly, they have a very similar kind of taste and the acidity in the wine and the acidity in the strawberry just balanced beautifully together. So um, we swirl it. Now let's remember something. Before you taste, rub your nose because that excites all of the smell uh, of sensors in your nose and you can uh, enhance the aroma. Turn your head to the right. 
my right nostril is really going on, left nostril's completely turned off. So I'd say I'm 100% right nostril uh, right now. So we swirl it, smell it, we put a little bit of wine on the tip of our tongue. Mm -mm -mm. Wow, I mean that is so refreshing. Um, this aside a pool on a beautiful spring or summer day, maybe some strawberries, maybe um, some fruit. Uh, fabulous. I mean, just really nice flavors. Um, you know, I am so proud of the fact that we're taking the Lenoir grape, which is a, a traditional grape for making port. And what uh, we're doing now is we're making a lovely rosé. Well, one of the great surprises of our trip to Portugal was one of the things that they're the most excited about in Portugal. Now, it's the dominant grape in port. And they uh, harvest the fruit at about 24% sugar, and they put it into a lugar. A lugar is like a swimming pool. It's a uh, concrete... A three and a half foot deep swimming pool basically made of concrete it's usually about 30 feet square and then they put 15 people in that uh, lugar and for the next five hours they dance and play music while they tread the the, the juice well when they do the rosé they extract that juice uh, a little bit sooner than three to four days they normally extract it after about one day, and then they add brandy. And that's how the rosé port is made. Well, we're going to be doing that without the lagar in our normal fermentation process. But like as we did with uh, Sophia Marie, we harvested the fruit early so that the color of the Lenoir wasn't so intense. And then it came out this beautiful pink color. And then we just naturally fermented it to make the rosé. When we do the port, what we'll do is we will do the exact same thing, except continue to add sweetening to the rosé to elevate the, the level of alcohol up to 18 to 19% alcohol. And that's how that will become a uh, Sophia Marie rosé port. Uh, very excited about it because the acidity in this rosé will easily carry the sweetness of, of a uh, port. Now this is an off-dry rosé, so this one is really crisp, so it's really a lovely, lovely wine. Smells good, looks good, and tastes good. Can't beat that. I mean, that's, that's a perfect uh, wine to have, and it's made with that lovely Lenoir grape that we're trying to uh, really promote as the unique grape of the state of Texas because it can be grown anywhere in the state of Texas. Uh, it's resistant to almost every disease and it's a beautiful grape. I mean the grape cluster can weigh up to two pounds so and it does beautifully in our humid climate. So that's our Lenoir Rosé Sophia Marie. Now I do want to remind everybody especially our VIPs or VIPs that want to be VIPs, we have the birthday bash this year, and it's a new kind of style of birthday bash. In the past, when Paul, our son, was in the Marine Corps, he naturally couldn't be here for the birthday bash, but as it turns out, my birthday and his birthday are separated by just one month. So, this year, it's the winemaker's birthday bash. So it's the two poles that we're going to be celebrating. So it's twice as big, twice as good, and we're going to have a bang up time. So uh, we're looking forward to that. It's Sunday, the 6th of March, and it's at 4.30. So we're looking forward this year to, ha oh, at, no, that's the dinner. The uh, birthday bash itself, I think, starts at 2 o'clock. Uh, but, but we're going to have a very special dinner, and it's going to have a uh, a host of wines associated with it. Go to our website and, uh, and learn all about it. It's going to be a fabulous birthday bash.
Also, I want to let you know, our next broadcast is going to be March the 20th, and then we've got four really interesting wines. We're going to do the Sparkling Brut, tremendous response from the Brut. Uh, it's made with uh, Chardonnay and Chenin Blanc. Then we're going to do the Private Merlot from the George Bush Library. It's a special blend that we did for the Presidential Library, and it's tasting fabulously. And it's a uh, 2004 vintage that we only sell here at the winery. It's a very special product. Then we're going to do the Private Port, and the vintage on that is going to be the 05. Uh, and then we're going to do the Paolo Cabernet Sauvignon uh, 05, uh, again, uh, because the 05 now is really coming on and developing some beautiful flavors. So the four wines are the Brut Sparkling, the Private Reserve Merlot George Bush. So get those from the winery because uh, they're not available in, uh, in the broad market. The Private Port 2005 and the Paolo Cabernet Sauvignon 2005, and that's the one that beat the Silver Oak uh, Napa uh, in a blind tasting that we did here in, in February of last year. So, this is a new product that we have here. Uh, it is a, uh, a, a very unique product, and what it is, it is a refrigerant that's in here. And what we do is we keep it in the freezer, and then you put it on the top of the bottle so that when you pour the wine into the glass, it pours the wine out at perfect chilled temperature. So it is absolutely amazing. It also aerates it as it goes through the uh, refrigerant part of the thing. Uh, the refrigerant doesn't touch the wine, it's just surrounding uh, as it goes through. Now the wine that we just did is the new Moscato. This Moscato has just taken off. And it's so exciting about marketing, you know, because we've been making Muscat Canelli since 1985. We've always made a really nice Muscat Canelli. I was so excited about Muscat Canelli a couple of years ago, I actually uh, planted 22 more acres in our Merrill's Vineyard up in the High Plains and we were there last weekend, and the vineyard looks fabulous. It's the coldest winter on history in the uh, High Plains. I was very fearful that we were going to have bud loss and even potentially trunk damage because it got to four or five below zero out there, and yet we checked every bud, all the plants. They look great. So. This so far is lining up to be a great 2011 vintage. Uh, and I checked all my baby muscats. They're now up on the wire. They should produce in the vicinity of about 15 pounds uh, of uh, grapes per plant. And they're ready. Uh, and when muscat vines are young, they produce floral uh, characteristic. And I tell you, this is the most floral muscat canelli we've ever made. It smells, I mean, it smells just like perfume. What's exciting from a marketing perspective is that for years and years we've made Muscat Canelli. And every year, Muscat Canelli sales go up 2%, 3%, 4%, because Texans like slightly sweet wines. Well, all of a sudden, Moscato is a generic term that is all inclusive of all Muscat type grapes of which there's at least 15 or 20. You've got Muscat of Alexander, you've got Orange Muscat, Black Muscat, you've got all of these different Muscats. And generically, it is Moscato. The finest of all Muscats, Muscats is the Muscat Canelli. The Muscat Canelli is the most floral of all the Muscats. So now we're calling it Moscato, and sales of our Moscato have gone up 40% in the last six months. It's amazing, you know, if you, if you uh, look at the name of a wine, and I'll give you two examples. If you call it Syrah, it doesn't sell. If you call it Shiraz, it sells. If you call it um, 
a Pinot Gris, it doesn't sell. If you call it Pinot Grigio, it sells. Moscato sells, and uh, so we're really excited about it. Uh, uh, we have a great uh, bit of Muscat Canelli that we're growing up there. The young vineyard, we're going to have a single vineyard, young vineyard Muscat Canelli uh, coming out in the, the spring in April. Uh, Merrill's Vineyard Muscat uh, and Muscato is out in the market now. We have our Texas Moscato that we've got out in the market now. Just an amazing wine. And what we did this year that was really, I think, really special is we took the Muscat Canelli, 80%, and I blended 20% Gewürztraminer into it in the 2010 vintage. And I'll tell you, the two are the most floral of all the grapes. And when you put Muscat Canelli floral and Gewürztraminer floral together, it makes an enhanced floral characteristic that picks up the spice in the Gewürz and the apricots of the uh, Muscat. So let's taste it. Let's see if the right nostril is still doing its thing. Yep. Still about 100%. So let's, uh, beautiful color, perfectly white in color. Mmm. Mmm. Ah, wow. I tell you, it, it coats your tongue. It just fills your nasal cavity with this aroma that just exudes up into your nose. It goes down your throat in such a soft and soothing manner. I tell you, a novice wine drinker would love this. An experienced wine drinker would love it because it provides a different kind of experience. It still has crispness. It's not overly sweet. It's still crisp. But yet it's so floral. It's just a beautiful, beautiful wine. Texas can do amazing Muscat Canelli. Probably as good as any place, maybe better even than Northern Italy, where they're known for their uh, uh, Asti Spumanti, which is basically a sparkler made from the Muscat Canelli. I mean, this is a beautiful, beautiful wine. is Rosé Port. So guess what Messina Hop's going to be doing next year? We're going to be taking Sophia Marie as a Rosé, but then we're going to be doing a Sophia Marie Rosé Port. And let me tell you how they do it in Portugal. They take the, uh, the, the, their traditional grapes, and one of them is uh, Toriga Nacional. It's the dominant grape in Port and they uh, harvest the fruit at about 24% sugar, and they put it into a lugar. A lugar is like a swimming pool. It's a uh, concrete, uh, three and a half foot deep swimming pool, basically, made of concrete. It's usually about 30 feet square, and then they put 15 people in that uh, lugar and for the next five hours, they dance and play music while they tread the, the, the juice. Well, when they do the rosé, they extract that juice uh, a little bit sooner than three to four days. 
they normally extract it after about one day, and then they add brandy. And that's how the rosé port is made. Well, we're going to be doing that without the lagar we, in our normal fermentation process. But like as we did with uh, Sophia Marie, we harvested the fruit early so that the color of the Lenoir wasn't so intense. And then it came out this beautiful pink color. And then we just naturally fermented it to make the rosé. When we do the port, what we'll do is we will do the exact same thing except continue to add sweetening to the rosé to elevate the, the level of alcohol up to 18 to 19 percent alcohol and that's how that will become a uh, Sophia Marie rosé port. Uh, very excited about it because the acidity in this rosé will easily carry the sweetness of, of a uh, port. Now this is an off dry rosé so this one is really crisp, so it's really a lovely, lovely wine. Smells good, looks good, and tastes good. Can't beat that. I mean, that's, that's a perfect uh, wine to have, and it's made with that lovely Lenoir grape that we're trying to uh, really promote as the unique grape of the state of Texas because it can be grown anywhere in the state of Texas. Uh, it's resistant to almost every disease. And it's a beautiful grape. I mean, the grape cluster can weigh up to two pounds. So, and it does beautifully in our humid climate. So that's our Lenoir Rosé Sophia Marie. Now I do want to remind everybody, especially our VIPs or VIPs that want to be VIPs, we have the birthday bash this year. And it's a new kind of style of birthday bash. In the past, when Paul, our son, was in the Marine Corps, he naturally couldn't be here for the birthday bash. But as it turns out, my birthday and his birthday are separated by just one month. So this year, it's the winemaker's birthday bash. So it's the two poles that we're going to be celebrating. So it's twice as big, twice as good, and we're going to have a bang up time. So uh, we're looking forward to that. It's Sunday, the 6th of March. And it's at 4.30. So we're looking forward this year to have... Oh, at, no, that's the dinner. The uh, birthday bash itself, I think, starts at 2 o'clock. Uh, but, but we're going to have a very special dinner. And it's going to have uh, a host of wines associated with it. Go to our website and, uh, and learn all about it. It's going to be a fabulous birthday bash. Also, I want to let you know, our next broadcast is going to be March the 20th. And then we've got four really interesting wines. We're going to do the Sparkling Brut, tremendous response from the Brut. Uh, it's made with uh, Chardonnay and Chenin Blanc. Then we're going to do the Private Merlot from the George Bush Library. It's a special blend that we did for the Presidential Library, and it's tasting fabulously. And it's a uh, 2004 vintage that we only sell here at the winery. It's a very special product. Then we're going to do the private port, and the vintage on that is going to be the 05. Uh, and then we're going to do the Paolo Cabernet Sauvignon uh, 05, uh, again, uh, because the 05 now is really coming on and developing some beautiful flavors. So the four wines are the Brut Sparkling, the Private Reserve Merlot George Bush, so get those from the winery because uh, they're not available in, uh, in the broad market. The Private Port, 2005, and the Paolo Cabernet Sauvignon, 2005, and that's the one that beat the Silver Oak uh, Napa uh, in a blind tasting that we did here in, in February of last year. So this is a new product that we have here. Uh, it is a, uh, a, a very unique product, and what it is it is a refrigerant that's in here. And what we do is we keep it in the freezer and then you put it on the top of the bottle so that when you pour the wine into the glass, it pours the wine out at perfect chilled temperature. So it is absolutely amazing. 
it also aerates it as it goes through the uh, refrigerant part of the thing. Uh, the refrigerant doesn't touch the wine, it's just surrounding uh, as it goes through. Now the wine that we just did is the new Moscato. This Moscato has just taken off. And it's so exciting about marketing, you know, because we've been making Muscat Canelli since 1985. We've always made a really nice Muscat Canelli. I was so excited about Muscat Canelli a couple of years ago, I actually uh, planted 22 more acres in our Merrill's Vineyard up in the High Plains, and we were there last weekend, and the vineyard looks fabulous. It's the coldest winter on history in the uh, High Plains. I was very fearful that we were going to have bud loss and even potentially trunk damage because it got to four or five below zero out there, and yet we checked every bud, all the plants, they look great. So this so far is lining up to be a great 2011 vintage. Uh, and I checked all my baby muscats, they're now up on the wire. They should produce in the vicinity of about 15 pounds uh, of uh, grapes per plant, and they're ready. Uh, and when muscat vines are young, they produce floral uh, characteristic, and I'll tell you, this is the most floral muscat canelli we've ever made. It smells, I mean, it smells just like perfume. But what's exciting from a marketing perspective is that for years and years we've made muscat canelli, and every year muscat canelli sales go up 2%, 3%, 4%, because Texans like slightly sweet wines. Well, all of a sudden, Moscato is a generic term that is all-inclusive of all Muscat-type grapes, of which there's at least 15 or 20. You've got Muscat of Alexander, you've got Orange Muscat, Black Muscat, you've got all these different Muscats. And generically, it is Moscato. The finest of all Muscats, Muscats is the Muscat Canelli. The Muscat Canelli is the most floral of all the Muscats. So now we're calling it Moscato, and sales of our Moscato have gone up 40% in the last six months. It's amazing, you know, if you, if you uh, look at the name of a wine, and I'll give you two examples. If you call it Syrah, it doesn't sell. If you call it Shiraz, it sells. If you call it um, a Pinot Gris, it doesn't sell. If you call it Pinot Grigio, it sells. Moscato sells, and uh, so we're really excited about it. Uh, uh, we have a great uh, bit of Muscat Canelli that we're growing up there. The Young Vineyard, we're going to have a single vineyard, Young Vineyard Muscat Canelli uh, coming out in the, the spring in April. Uh, Merrill's Vineyard, Muscat, uh, and Muscato is out in the market now. We have our Texas Muscato that we've got out in the market now. Just an amazing wine. And what we did this year that was really, I think, really special is we took the Muscat Canelli, 80%, and I blended 20% Gewürztraminer into it in the 2010 vintage. And I'll tell you, the two are the most floral of all the grapes. And when you put Muscat Canelli floral and Gewürztraminer floral together, it makes an enhanced floral characteristic that picks up the spice in the Gewürz and the apricots of the uh, Muscat. So let's taste it. Let's see if the right nostril is still doing its thing. Yep. Still about 100%, so let's, uh, beautiful color, perfectly white in color. Mmm, mmm. Ah, wow, I tell you, it, it coats your tongue, it just fills your nasal cavity with this aroma that just exudes up into your nose. It goes down your throat, in such a soft and soothing manner. 
I tell you, a novice wine drinker would love this. An experienced wine drinker would love it because it provides a different kind of experience. It still has crispness. It's not overly sweet. It's still crisp, but yet it's so floral. It's just a beautiful, beautiful wine. Texas can do amazing Muscat Canelli. Probably as good as any place, maybe better even than Northern Italy, where they're known for their uh, uh, Asti Spumanti, which is basically a sparkler made from the Muscat Canelli. I mean, this is a beautiful, beautiful wine.